Hey everybody, it's Sergio with the Rideshare Guy. Welcome to another episode of Behind the Wheel. This is the real Behind the Wheel, not the one on the Uber uh, website. So um, today I'm joined by Mike from the Inland Empire. Mike, welcome. Hey, how's it going? Um, we're doing good. We're doing good. And, you know, Mike is one of these drivers that I wanted to talk to for a while. Um, and, you know, this is a great occasion and education and information, actually, because He's a numbers man. He knows what he's doing. And and he did not dress up for us. He does dress like this uh, when he's driving Uber and Lyft, which I think is amazing. But, uh, you know, we get into all that. So introduce yourself, what you did before, how you got into uh, Rideshare, how long you've been at it. My name is Mike Bedner. I've been doing Rideshare for probably about two, three years. I used to be a professional taxi driver. I had my own business um 10 years later down the line unfortunately these companies unlawfully monopolized the industry destroyed my market and uh i just figured you know if you can't beat them join them tried it out i already owned some teslas um upon trying it out i just saw how corrupt it was and they controlled every facet of how i operated including my fee and uh the only option I had was accepting or denying anything. And it's just a smidgen of what a real independent contractor is. And I went from making, let's say $50 an hour on short trips to 150 on long trips as a taxi driver with a lower overhead than what it would be for Uber and Lyft to just complete garbage pay where I'm literally slaving away just to make ends meet. Yeah, and I mean, we you know we do hear look we do hear quite a bit about that. But before we get into the details of what you're yeah. doing and what you're discovering on your own, you know, let's talk a little bit about the the taxi industry, right? I mean, mm -hmm. um, obviously it's a regulated industry. Obviously, you have set rates. You cannot go below that. And right. uh, let's you know tell us a little bit about that transition you experienced from the taxi industry to uh, independent contractorship with Uber and Lyft. Well, as a taxi driver is nice, you know, you run your mileage and you get paid what you you get paid for what you work for with yeah. Uber and Lyft. They keep you in a, a little bubble and you can never truly get ahead. And that, that's the big difference. You're just working and working and working at the end of the day. Realistically, Uber and Lyft, they should always make money, even if we are at a loss. And that's the biggest problem here, because we go to work to make money. We don't go to work to make them money like in a sense we work together for the common goal of making money but you know it shouldn't be just one-sided it shouldn't be all about them yeah. and the great thing of when i was a taxi driver was you work longer hours you make more money you run more miles you make more money with uber and lyft they cut your mileage pay when you work more miles you yeah know? um what have i mean the, you know you said you've been doing ride share for two three years now Obviously, at the pandemic, during the pandemic, you worked a little bit, and then things were good, right? Absolutely. Because you right know, after, good. right after the pandemic, right after the pandemic. Okay, so, um, but then you were operating with a rate card, just like the cabs do. I'll, yes. I'll be it. I'll yes. be it a quarter of what the rate card <laughs> of cabs are in LA. In fact, uh, Mike is one of the. Um, you know, he supplied me with with some amazing uh, information and charts and which we talked about on Show Me The Money Club a couple of weeks ago that maybe Uber and Lyft are not charging enough and uh, yeah. what the comparison would be between a cabs, you know, between what cabs charge for similar trips or identical trips and how underpaid the drivers are because these companies are not charging enough to their consumers. Is that correct? Yes, it's like they set the bar so low so they can monopolize the market. And now they're at the point where they're trying to get it back up, but they're only trying to get it up for themselves. And then so, what they're portraying on some trips is they're not even making money. So is the bar so low they're not making money or are they cooking the books? Because there's certain aspects that I don't agree with, like possibly their commercial insurance, which is a really bad insurance, which only covers for period three, right? Only yeah. period three. Yeah. And if I was able to buy my own insurance, it would be, let's say, maybe about 2000 less if I average everything out. And the uh, insurance policy would be way better, and I'd be covered for period one, two, and three. You know, and there's big differences because I'm paying for their insurance and my regular car insurance. It doesn't make any sense. If I'm an independent contractor, I would love to purchase my own insurance. Yeah. 
Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, uh, you know, the, the insurance coverage they provide is for P1, P2, P3, but they vary so much. And then God forbid you get in a crash, you have the $2,500 deductible from the get-go anyway, which is right. which is draconian, really. But um, uh, let's talk a little bit about your experimenting over the last month or so that you kept me in touch with. And uh, what did you discover? Um I mean, we we know these things, right? Uh, you know, you know, a lot of these companies come out and s throw things out there that are just, you know, you know, and they keep saying, "Well, we're not going to lie about this. We have the data, right?" So let's start with let's start taking their data apart a little bit. Um, you know, they're well known, obviously, and and the CEOs have one of them at, at least have, was on our show. And said the driver earnings are up. They're you know on average nationwide drivers are earning thirty two dollars per active hour, right? And right. you you did a little bit of your own experimenting. Actually, you took one for the team, which we appreciate. Yes. And uh, financially it hurts. <laughs> financially it hurts. Um, and I have to admit, I do not trust these companies at all. You know, they lie through their teeth. Um, and my experiment last night was I had a special lap that made me make sure I ran. $32 active hours. And I wasn't making any money. I wasn't taking any trips. Um, it basically denied every single order or trip that was sent to me. Um, and it got to the point where I started getting desperate because I'm out here to make money. So I started readjusting it lower and lower and lower from 30 to 25 to $20 a trip, just so I'd start making money. I came home after 12 hours, about $100, and that's because I folded on my original goal of $32 active hours, like they said it was supposed to be, and, you know, the proof's in the pudding. Well, you know? I, I, you know, you, you're you're in the proverbial um, between a hard place and a rock, right? Exactly. And, and I mean, <laughs> you can decline, you know, and recline and decline, just decline, decline, right? And where yeah. are you going to be at the end of the day? You're just going to be sitting there okay. um, earning nothing, or mm -hmm. you're going to take the crumbs that they're offering you. Uh, ultimately, exactly. they, they break you down, right? Yeah. And, and so it seems like you you gave up. And then so what were your results yesterday when you did that 12 uh, hours? 12 hours for about 100 bucks. Gross. Yeah. And that's before expenditures. So, you know. We all know. So so you're either going to take what they're giving you to the point to make some cash flow because you're I active. have no choice. So basically, you know, it's like I'm forced into it because, yeah. yes, I get there's an option. Work another job. But for this right this moment, I'm doing this and I'm forced into taking really garbage orders because I have no delegation over my own pay. Yeah, I'm an independent contractor. I've been one for a long time separate from driving and i've always delegated my own pay my own time the way i worked my tools and i can't do that with these companies they delegate every facet for me yeah well um but let's break that down a little bit further right so yeah. you also discovered that you know these companies have a way of spinning things and 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 deflecting things right because when we yes. say well, nobody's earning 32 per active hour because if your utilization rate is 50 percent, that 32 is 16. It's not 32. Mm -hmm. right. um, just like you figured out yesterday, right? I bet you your utilization rate yesterday was probably 25% because you kept declining all these trips. And mm -hmm. at the end, you probably were active for out of the 12 hours, probably, I don't know, three hours maybe? Right. Yeah. Um, I don't I didn't actually look at that point. I just look at my online hours because, you know, this is how people should look at it. If you're going to work at 12 o'clock and you work till, you know, 12 hours later, that is your work schedule, you yeah. know. So if you're actively driving or not, you're technically out there working, you yeah. know. And so I don't look at the actual active time usually. All I know is, you know, I was out there for 12 hours. I ran my course for 30 an hour or $32 an hour. And my results are I didn't make any money. Yeah, I cannot live off of what they're saying. They're saying all the orders are $32 paid active. But I wasn't even getting that yeah. coming through in my end. Yeah. So, but uh, they also talked about when upfront fares came around, right? Mm -hmm. They said it's a rebalancing act. The short trips are going to pay more, a little mm -hmm. bit more. And the long trips are going to pay a little bit less. Of course, no specifics. 
but right. it's all going to average out trust the algorithm right we're going to manage this in a way that it's not it doesn't end up being a rate cut we just ran a survey and over 2000 people voted 93 percent of the people voted that upfront fares is a rate cut do you agree with that yes. survey i definitely agree with it and we i've even calculated it out compared it to trips yeah and i've seen a lot of trips where they're trying to pay 50 cents a mile on average so in my area it used to be uh, 75 cents a mile so that's obviously 25 cents a mile off the top yeah and and so so let's break it down so on the short trips i figured and correct me if i'm wrong on this that mm -hmm. Um, they are paying about dollar and a quarter a mile. Let's say, you yeah. know, a four mile trip, it's going to pay you five bucks. That's going to take you 20 minutes. Well, yes. if you take that to active hours, right? If you mm -hmm. do, assuming you do three more of those identical trips, five bucks for, right. you know, 15 minutes each, you're at $20 an active hour. Where mm -hmm. is the 32? Now, there is if no you price. don't do that and you take a long trip at 50 cents a mile, Yes, mm -hmm. they may be paying you $30 per active hour for that hour, for that single trip. Right. And then, then the return is not factored in, right? The, the, yeah. the mileage rates at 50 cents a mile is not, none of that is factored in, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm seeing this dilemma for the driver. Take everything, right? And take mm -hmm. short trips, only make 20 bucks an active hour, or take long trips, but including the return, that's still going to be down to 20 bucks per active right. hour. Is that right. why you're discovering? Yes, they're keeping you within a th certain threshold. You can't actually, you know, profit. They, you know, at the end of the day, they'll always profit. But at the end of the day, you can lose and you can't move forward. You know, they keep you suppressed, in, in other words. What, what do you, I mean, look, uh, uh, we, we try to inform and educate our, our community, right? And and mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure there are a lot of people who are happy doing what they're doing. But um I look at this as um, the casino always wins kind of a situation, right? Once in a while, they'll throw you a cherry here and there to keep you interested in the game. Right. right? right. And, and you know, talk to me a little bit about that, that the, this the aspect of the game that odds are theirs, evens are theirs. At the end, mm -hmm. you can't win. But what do you do? Do you give up? Do you do something else? Um, what are you doing me, about it? For me, I'm getting to the point where I'm thinking about moving on. You know, it's it's not, it doesn't make any sense. I have an $80,000 Tesla, you know, and I'm running into the ground for nothing. To make, you know, Dara Kashawi his 24 mil, you know, it doesn't make any sense to me, you know. And even you saying right now that you might get a, a good bone here or there. Well, last night, I didn't get any good bones until I folded. Yeah. So that's where we're at, Yeah. you know. So you We're gave, at the mercy you gave of in and took everything, right? You gave in, took everything to create some cash flow, right? Yes. And, and, yes. and, and that's what we're trying to convey. That's the message we're trying to convey. And it's, it's not a bad gig. It's just that the way you are managed, micromanaged to a point that if you sit out there and cherry pick, you're mm -hmm. not going to get anywhere anymore. Right. If you, and if you do it their way, you're not going to reach the numbers that they're talking about. Right. So I, I am, you know, I'm humbled by what you're doing just for the fact that I wish more drivers did what you're doing, meaning figuring these these nuances. When, because a lot of people go out there and say, I'm just my goal is to make 200 bucks today. Right. right. If it takes me 14 hours, I'm going to try to make 200. If it takes me eight hours, I'm going to try to make 200. Well, none of mm -hmm. us are out here to mess around. We're all out here to be profitable and run businesses and yes. make money. But mm -hmm. when you're dealing with algorithms who or which are dictating what you're going to do, right? Where does mm -hmm. the flexibility come into play? Where does the freedom come into play? You're a slave to your own job. I mean, um, I think that sentence says it all. Um, now, you've been doing this for a couple, three years, right? Mm -hmm. um, you do it your way. You're not going to get the numbers that they're talking about. And you right. do it their way. You're definitely not going to get the numbers. So what should a driver do? You tell me. I mean, um, uh, when I get asked this question from drivers, I tell them don't get caught up in between the rock and the hard place because you're going to get stuck and you won't be able to get out easily because you need to work to make money 
And that's actually a predicament I have because I want to move on, but I can't make enough money to pay down my bills to move on to a, a certain job that I was thinking about. And then I do have my own black car service that is in the making right now, but it's just taking a long time to get everything together. I don't have the finances, you know, yeah. starting a business, it's going to take a little bit of cash flow. And with how little these companies are paying, I basically only have enough money to pay my bills, but it's hard to have anything extra. Yeah. Do you see, do you see this happening with a lot of drivers, but they're not aware that this is happening. And then six, eight months down the road, they have an extra 30, 40,000 miles on the car and nothing to show for it. And then they, they go, wait a minute, what happened here? Right. Yeah. Um, I got one for you since the beginning of the year, I put on about 60 or 70,000 miles on my car. Wow. And, and you're just paying bills with that. Yeah. In, in, in the taxi industry, I probably would have made about 150, 200,000 dollars in this industry. I might've made maybe 50,000. But do you see that in the taxi industry, you may make that because the mileage rates are much higher, but um, your dead time downtime would be probably as much as you experienced last night because not too many people are using cabs anymore, right? Nowadays, but in the old days before this yeah. company destroyed the market, it was good. I loved it. I miss it. You know, I live life in the fast lane. And, um, you know, and the good thing about that is you get paid the same amount for every mile you work, which means you're getting ahead with Uber and Lyft you're suppressed. You can't get ahead. Yeah. They delegate your mileage rate. They fluctuate it, whatever, it, you know, their terms are. Yeah. Um, what, you know, without, you know, being too negative, obviously, you know, they always ask me, I mean, obviously I'm in touch with these companies. They go, look, you know, if it's so bad, why are so many people doing it? Why do you think so many people are doing this? Like in the millions? Because it's easy and convenient because they set it up. So it's so convenient. When when I had my taxi business, you have to do stuff like get fingerprinted at the uh, police department. You got to get a license. You got to get drug tested. You have to do the whole nine yards. Uh, we do, I think, um, yearly um, yearly checks on the cars. They make sure all the meters are up to date. Um, everything's done through the county. And so it's regulated. It's more formal, would you say? And with Uber and Lyft, it's not formal. You just get on the app really easily, mediocre background check, no drug test, no fingerprinting. You have probably some criminals, maybe even people that do drugs driving cars, you know, and vice versa with the customers. You know, they're not regulating the customers either, but they don't want to, in my opinion, because they don't want to limit their clientele base. Yeah. Do you, do you think, you know, uh, the battle should be fought more instead of, you know, educating the driver base, right? More in the eyes of the consumers. And do you do that yourself? Like when you have people in your car, yes. do you ob yeah. obviously you're a well-spoken um, guy. Do you speak to your consumers or customers? I um, actually have a well-written article uh, that I composed and I have it actually on the back of my seats for people to read freely. And once the customers do see exactly what these these companies are doing and what their take rate is, they're actually really sickened by it and they don't want to conform to the corruption, um, but they ultimately need it because these companies have, monop have monopolized the industry. So they need the transportation. And a lot of them do want to negotiate business with me directly because they don't want to go through the companies once they figure all this out. But a lot of them don't even know the facts because, you know, they're living their normal life. Yeah, I mean, they, you know, consumer, I think, is the battlefront that uh, our community has to notify, inform, actually, of what's going on. Because, you know, mm -hmm. the blood, sweat and tears and equipment usage is on us. Right. Mm -hmm. And and then the consumer is just doing it because it's convenient and it's cheap, yep. to be honest with yep. you. Uh, but when a, when a consumer takes, you know, a 15 minute trip for five miles and they pay 12 bucks for it, probably. And then you end up getting mm -hmm. four out of the 12 or five. They right. don't know. They don't know. And I'm pretty sure, you know, at 142 million consumers they have on the platform, most of them mm -hmm. would be friendly to the to the driver's uh, situation. Right. 
But on the other side, I know you're also doing some advocacy and, and you know, you're trying to spread the word that, mm -hmm. you know, this shell game that I call it is not what it seems to be. And a lot of people are doing right. this blindly, just putting miles on their car with nothing to show for it after six, eight mm -hmm. months. What are you doing as far as that's concerned? Um, I go on Facebook groups and I spread the word, you know, uh, try enlightening other drivers because there's a lot of new drivers coming to the platform. And I hear time and time again, you know, should I be doing this? You know, and I want to advocate, no, you shouldn't or why you shouldn't maybe put it in their ballpark. Um, I like letting people know the laws, like what a free market is, for example, what a real independent contractor is. Um, you know, the fact that we're being exploited as independent contractors, uh, we have no delegation over our fee. We have no delegation over the way we operate. We get unlawful or unjustly deactivated. Um, if in my taxi business, if I got a complaint from a customer, that's as far as it would go, unless it was something serious where you need an actual investigation not you're kicked off the platform and we're going to give that customer a free ride. You know, that doesn't make any sense. How can you run a business like that? Yeah. I, and, you know, from, from what I'm hearing you're doing is that you're doing your advocacy, you're running your numbers, right? And yes. uh, numbers are not looking good, but you're still doing it, right? And, and yes. I always, you know, ask the people I'm interviewing on behind the wheel, you know, give me a couple of things that you like about this. You know about the. I love, I love the job. And a I couple really things do. that you don't like. Okay, I, I love the job. You know, obviously, I've been doing this type of work for a long time, professionally and with Uber and Lyft. Um, I love talking to people. You know, I have the car for it. I try dressing nice because I take it, you know, seriously. You know, you should be if you're a driver, you should be serious about it. Um, but what I don't like about it is, you know, the corruption. The bureaucracy, uh, the fact that our government isn't doing anything to protect us, protect our rights. Um, honestly, I hate these companies. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a sad thing because you're a professional person, obviously, and your background, and you like you like what you're doing, but you wish it was under different circumstances. Mm -hmm. um, I want to be regulated. You want it to be regulated? Well, you know, a lot of people. Um, don't like government in their business. But I think uh, I may have to agree with you on that, that at some point, you know, these companies do need a break check and the pendulum has swung too far their way. Um, so in the remaining couple of minutes, um, you know, give us some advice, give, give the viewers who are going to watch this by the thousands. There may be some new drivers and some veterans. Mm -hmm. Give us some advice. What should they do? What should they do for advocacy? How should they get their voices out and what they should do as far as their driving is concerned? How, you know, how should they calculate um, if they're profitable or not? Um, I would say if you can, it would be better to be a true independent contractor. If the market will allow it because they did monopolize, you know, I am having a hard time with customer base myself. You know, I actually would just recommend don't get in it at all. This is not the right time. If we were regulated, like a taxi company get into it yes because even if there's like no work you'll make money if you could do three orders in a day you would make money you'd probably make more money than what you're making now working eight hours taking 20 orders um so i would say just don't get into it right now and i'm probably gonna get out of it or find something else you know be a real professional you know if you have something that you're good at do that instead, because this is not the time. I'm making probably about 50% less than I was about a year and a half ago. With all those incentives, I can make 1400 in a day. Now, working the same hours, if not more, it's hard to make 200 bucks. I mean, that's a huge drop, though. 1400 in a day or a week? Um, I'm sorry, 1400 in two days in with two the days. bonuses. I would get two, two bonuses back to back. Yeah. And I'll be able to make fourteen hundred in two days. Yeah, that's the that's the control part that you, none of us have, right? It's an incentive based yeah. system, and you know, inflation people... and our pay is down, and their pay is up. Yeah. So uh, finally, let's go back to sum up what you did yesterday. So you went out twelve hours yesterday. 
Yes. And you, you got beaten down so much with, with offers that you wanted to make something as opposed to zero, right? Goose eggs. No, I got bills piling up just like anybody else. I can't go home with zero dollars. It's a wasted day. You know, our days are numbered. You only have 30 days in a month. And then it resets. So if I lose a day and I don't have that dollar amount I need, you know, I'm screwed technically. And I that probably goes for anybody. And so I got to the point where I'm like, I can't sustain trying to pull off their $32 active hours like they're saying I should be able to get. So I conformed to lowering the bar. Yeah. And unfortunately, that's where I see the game going as well. And uh, well, I appreciate you you doing this with me. I mean, look, it, we're, we're painted a gloomy picture, but we call it the way we see it. It is what it is yeah. out there at the moment, you know, and and uh, the light at the end of the tunnel, you know, maybe the train coming at you. I don't know. I, I'm just kind of being the voice of the community and being a driver myself for eight years. I, I see it exactly the way you're seeing it. You know, they keep just lowering the bar, lowering the bar and making it look like it's wonderful out there. And uh, at the moment, it's not. So I want to thank you for, for, you know, giving us the time. Yeah, and, definitely. Uh, you know, in closing, you know, give us a minute, give us a minute of where you, what you're going to do. I mean, are you going to continue doing this or? Uh... Um, the time being, um, I am looking for other avenues and I am trying to get my black car situated. Um, I am kind of stuck, you know, like I was saying, uh, you know, m you know, the world revolves around money, money to do everything. Black car service revolves around money. Um, getting another job, I'm kind of stuck because the the pay that they'll pay me would be less, for example, during the training period, and that could kind of screw me over. So I'm trying to make sure that all my bills are leveled out so when I do transition to something else, I can sustain my cost of living. I'm trying to be smart about it. Yeah. All right. Well, Mike, I appreciate it. Um, we'll, we'll put yeah, this Yeah, thank up. you, too. Thank you, too. Yeah, I appreciate it.